There's no football, so what else am I going to use it for? Hello everybody and welcome to another video today. As you can tell, with the clothes horse and the chair, there is no expense spared when I make my own little studio here. Um, the story behind the flag, it's uh, the flag I made for the 2020 K-League season. My love, my heart, my soul. I thought it was a nice little ring. Uh, but obviously no football. So <laughs> it's come to the point where it's part of my studio set up now in Casa Michael. Now, uh, the video today isn't actually about that. Today's video is, uh, I always say a little bit different because everything I'm trying to do is like not the same, a little uh, categories as such. Categories. But uh, I've tried to think something different every video. I need to stop touching my face. Um, today is video. Maybe there's a lot of videos like this on YouTube at the moment. But uh, what made me come to Korea and uh, the steps which happened made me get here in the first place. So um, it's quite a funny story really and so many twists and turns. So this is just what happened to me. Um, because the reason why I say it, because yesterday was my birthday, my 26th birthday. Happy birthday to the big guy. Um, but this is the four, I've only been in Korea for three years, but that was my fourth birthday here. So I'll explain to you the math behind that. Now it all started back in January 2017. It all started in January 2017. Um, I was uh, a little drunk one night, the night I uh, bought, uh, the night I got paid. I used to work in the co-op motor insurance in Manchester. I whack a picture up of the CIS tower where I used to work in the centre of Manchester there. Um, I got paid one night, uh, always get paid on a Thursday I remember. And uh, a little bit drunk, a few drinks, wasn't in work the next day I think I remember. And then I got on the phone to a friend who was living in Korea at the time. And uh, yeah, I, I I booked a flight to Seoul. <laughs> Quite literally, I booked a flight to Seoul to come visit. Because uh, I thought, well, you know, I've just been paid. The flights are very cheap. I think it was like £444 I paid, which is like the price now for like with all this bad situation going on around the world. It's a really low price for what it was. And I decided to come from like the 21st of March to the 30th of March. So my birthday is the 29th. I, I spent my birthday in Seoul in 2017. So I came over, loved it, and I thought I want to come back here, I want to live here because I love the place so much and I really fell like in love with the city. So um, I was applying for jobs whilst I was still in Korea on the internet through internet cafes and through recruiters and I was already getting job offers while sat in Incheon Airport going home. So what I did, I went home, uh, found a job and quit my job in Manchester and moved over in June. Now. It just wasn't that simple as what I'm explaining to you right now. Um, a bit of uh, the, the visa was a very long drawn out process for me. You need to get all your documents postponed. Uh, uh, apostles, sorry. <laughs> Apostled. Um, I'm not going to go into that because there's a million videos explaining what you need to do. Uh, basically, I should have been here in May, May 2017, but I had a problem. I've always ever had an Irish passport because of Irish family. I've always ever had an Irish passport. Now, all my documents were like British police check. At university was okay because people travel around for university. But I always remember it was the police check which was the problem because it was like British police check and um, Irish passport. The Korean immigration one. So I had to get myself a British passport. And it was the first time I've ever had a British passport and because I was like over 16 or 14 um, you have to have an interview to um, basically to qualify for this British passport. Now I say interview, I turned up to the passport offer, it's like hi Michael, what's your full name? Oh who's your phone provider? What's your bank? It was literally just a conversation like oh so why do you need the passport now? Dead informal, dead relaxed, it was amazing, it was, she was just there ticking away and we were just having a five minute conversation. I need to explain that I was, had a bit of a heavy night the night before as well. So I was probably stinking a little bit of uh, the old alcohol in that interview room. But that was a younger me, not a 26-year-old me. That was a 22-year-old me. No, it would have been 23 at the time. Great at maths, mate. Um, so anyway, got the passport. And I was supposed to move in like June. The, the school I'm at now, uh, they asked me to come for the end of June and like the 24th of June came, the 25th of June came and I'm still waiting on my passport. My passport came, but then I had to send it back to immigration to get the, the visa put into the passport. Wednesday I was waiting, Thursday I was waiting, Friday I was waiting. I was supposed to start work on Monday in Seoul. So I was like, oh my gosh, I've missed my start date. This is a nightmare. So what happened? Friday, 
I heard the postman drop letters through the door. My passport came on the Friday at midday and uh, I flew the next day. I had 24 hours. So it, it went from me preparing, preparing, preparing for about three months because it took a long time for me to get my documents. I wasn't slacking, I, just, I don't know, Didn't it was the first time, so I didn't know how to do everything fluently and, you know, fluently, but efficiently. And uh, the Friday was the day I got my passport with my, my Korean visa in and I was like, oh gosh, you've got 24 hours to prepare and say goodbye to everyone now. Because I got on the phone to my recruiter straight away and I said, listen to me, I have my passport in my hand. He went, great, book to your flight. And my recruiter, I'm going to pop a link down below of a podcast I had with him. It was his podcast he invited me on. Still a good, really good guy. I still talk to him regularly to see how he's doing and all this, that and the other. Hopefully, when the season starts again, he knows what he's doing. He's going to come and watch Sol Leland with me. Um, but he booked a flight on the Friday just as soon as I got my passport. And I was away the next day. I had 24 hours left in Manchester. So that was a bit of an emotional roller coaster from thinking, oh, it's, it's happening, get your visa. No, it's happening now. You are moving tomorrow. You are moving tomorrow. So that was a bit of an emotional day. I always remember that day. Uh, I remember everything happening that day because it was just a bit of an emotional time. And um, what I said to myself is, uh, I'm going to tell a very embarrassing story now. I studied in Manchester Metropolitan University. I also did a semester in Galway in Ireland, um, in the west of Ireland. Now, I remember I only had four months there but uh, I got homesick. <laughs> I got homesick for Manchester. And um, I was like, oh, because just, you know, I was younger at the time and I didn't really know how things worked. As much as you think you know everything, you, you really don't until you start living alone. It was the first time I ever lived alone. And you know, you know, simple little things like getting your shopping done properly, keeping it maintained with your cleaning and your cooking and your laundry, stuff like that that you don't really think about. You think, ah, that'd be really easy at that. And you, it, it comes on top of you, on top of studying as well. Um, I got homesick. Um, so what I decided was, oh, I'm never moving away from Manchester again. But then Seoul came about and I was like, right, I've got to move to Seoul. Like, this is something I really want to do. I said to myself, enjoy it for six months. And then in six months, you're going to get a little bit homesick and then just power through your last six months and then be back in Manchester. It's your year of experience in Seoul. Diddly diddly dum. That's it. I think within the first two weeks of me living here, I knew I wasn't going to stay a year. I knew I was going to stay a lot longer than that. I knew it. I just knew it from like two, three weeks in because I enjoyed it from the moment I got here. And as I've said in many videos before, your hardest month increase with your first month because you don't have your visa you don't have your visa card, as I explained in previous videos. So you have no phone, you have no internet, you have no real access to anything that you would do if you do have the card. So I would say your first month is your hardest month. So hang in there if you're in your first month now watching this video. Um, I remember having a shower. You know, like you, you like you, you just think into the abyss when you're having a shower. It's like... I remember thinking into the abyss and I was like, I need to stay here for a longer year. I need to stay here for a longer year. And this was like August, this was two months later, uh, just in the shower. Like. So um, my, uh, the year went like that for me. And then it came to June when it came to my contract renewal and I stayed for another year. And then the next year came and I stayed for another year. So it's come to the point now, my contract's up in three months time um, uh, in the end of June. And um, I always stayed in the same school. I've not moved schools. Now I have friends here who've been here for five, six years and they've been to five different, or five or six different schools. It's your preference and what you prefer to do. Some people like a new challenge. Some people just move on. They want to move closer to Seoul. They want to move out of Seoul. They want to move down to Busan. They want to move to Daegu. They want to move to, do you know what I mean? It's what you want to do. You get your feet, you land on your feet and you see what, what's best for you. You go visit cities on the weekend and you go, you know what, Seoul isn't for me. This place is, or you live out in the suburbs, you may be living in the Gwangido area, which is outside of Seoul and you want to move in closer. So uh, things like that really, uh, it's your choice. Once you have your first year experience under your belt, it's easy for you to get another job here. So you kind of really work out what you want to do. Now I feel like I've been lucky where I'm at because I enjoy where I am. Um, I enjoy my local area. I live in North Seoul, which has a really good uh, line four, which goes straight to everything basically uh, in the city. So I really enjoy where I am. Now, um, that was just literally a bit of a, a, a quick backstory to 
why I was here, how I got here, the troubles that it took me to get here. Um, the visa isn't cheap to do. The visa isn't cheap to do. It cost me a couple of hundred pounds to get all my documents apostled and sent away to um, a solicitor to check them to make sure that they're real. Uh, that can be a bit of a pain. Seriously, it can be. So um, obviously, if you've got any comments, concerns, any any questions really about my experience, you know, fire away. Do you know what I mean? I'm more than happy to, to, to answer them. Um, obviously, guys, stay safe. We know what's going on at the moment. So stay safe, be true. Have a pint and just remember, just relax.